Okay, hello and good morning. Let's take a look here. We're doing a percent formula, and the one that I gave you is in the form of a proportion. So it's is over of equals percent over 100, and this is part over whole. Okay, memorize that. What is the marking of pure gold? 24K is 100% pure gold. Okay, and uh, what percent is, well, let's work this one, um, $3 of $16? Well, we don't know the percent, so you're going to put N over 100 or X over 100 equals the of is the whole amount, which is $16, and the is is the part, which is 3. So you're going to multiply 100 times 3, get 300, divided by 16. And this gives you your percent. It's 18.75%. And what that means is for every one dollar, for every one dollar, um, three dollars would be 18 cents, about 19 cents. Okay? And so about 81 cents would be the opposite of that, would be 92% or 82%. 82%, and then this one is 19%, or about 19%. Okay, and so I guess this would have to be 81%. Okay, so percent is out of 100. So for every $1 bill, that would be 19 cents. Anyway, let's go on. Today you have some word problems, and I'm only going to do one here with you right now. So let's take a look here. Number two, there are 36 carpenters in a crew. On a certain day, 29 were present. What percent? You might want to circle that. All right, so we have is over of equals percent over 100. This is the part. This is the whole. The more you write this, the more you remember it. So is 36 part of the carpenters or is it all of the carpenters? I would say it's the whole amount. So the 36 goes down here. The 29 is the part that showed up and then it's going to be X over 100. So you're going to multiply and get 2900 divided by 36. And when you do that, you get 80.6%. So about 81% showed up. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right, so that's how you're gonna do these. You have to decide if the numbers they give you is the whole or the part. All right, so today's worksheet is right here. It will be listed on Canvas and I will put it in the chat box. You just need to access it. So there are 12 problems. Let's talk about geometry. All right, so on geometry, yesterday we had to reflect over a line and then over another line. So let's do that. Now pay attention because this is an EOC question. So I am going to come around and check your bell work to make sure you're copying down all the information. So here we go. I would start off with graphing the point. So I would go negative 2. Remember, it's over and then up or down. Okay, so I went over, negative, up. So that point is right there. I'll call it point A. Now it says reflect it over the line Y. This is my Y. So I'm going to go down one. Notice the tick mark is sideways. So the line looks like this. And I want to reflect it over that line. So it's one, two, three, four spaces. So one, two, three three, four spaces would be right here. So my new point, A prime, would be right there. Now, where is this point? This point is negative two, 
and then down one, two, three, four, five. Down five. Okay? But we're not done. They want you to reflect it over this line, which is y equals x. y equals x is a 45 that looks like this. Now to reflect it, you're going to go perpendicular. Now perpendicular to this would be 90 degrees. Um, let me see if I have something to show you what that looks like. So 90 degrees would be basically here's 90 degrees right here. See that square? So I could line it up where it touches the line and touches the point. So 90 degrees would be this way. So you want to go this way a certain distance and then you want to go this way the same amount. All right, so it's going to be somewhere over there. Okay, but what I would do is memorize the formula. And the formula for reflecting over y equals x is switch. So you just switch these. So it's going to be negative 5 and negative 2. All right, that's your answer. So this is going to be a double prime. So what you're going to do is go negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, I didn't get too close, but it is kind of close. And then down 2, 1, 2. All right, and again, I'm not using graph paper. That's why it looks kind of bunched up. All right, anyhow, with graph paper, it would be better. And there it is. Let's go on. This one right here says list the seven circle formulas. Remember, you had one, two, three inside, on, in the middle, on the circle, outside the circle. Okay, so this one is the angle is equal to the arc. This one is the angle is equal to half of the arc. This one is the angle is equal to half of the big arc minus the little arc. Then you got the two x's where it's not the center of the circle. So one of them is an angle. So the angle is equal to half of the big arc plus the little arc. This one is like multiplying a, b, C, D. So A times B equals C times D. Okay? And then you got two more. You have uh, one that looks like that and another one that looks like a tangent. So you got two of these here. And uh, so this one is X, 5, and 7. So it's tangent squared is equal to the outside piece times the whole thing, which is 5 plus 7 is 12. This one is 2, 3, 4, 5 is the outside, times the whole thing, which is 5. And then the outside times the whole thing, which is 9. And those are the seven formulas you need to know. All right, let's move on. Make sure you copy this down, because I am coming around. All right, leave your bell work out. On a new sheet of paper, copy this down. Let's talk about these formulas here. Area of any triangle is one-half the base times the height. Area of a circle is pi radius squared. Circumference, the distance around a circle, is pi times diameter. Sine is so ka toa so opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if you didn't learn trig, here's a little review. Those are the formulas. Area of the sector is a fraction. And then times the area formula, which is pi radius squared. The arc length is part of a circle, okay, an arc. So it's going to be a fraction times pi times diameter. 
These are the formulas you need to memorize uh, for your next test. And by the way, your next test is this Friday online, but I'm going to give you till Sunday. And that's going to be Chapter 10. When we get back from break, I'm going to start talking about volume. All right, let's go on a little bit more. Find the slither. Do that right now. So what you have is you're going to have the area of the sector minus the triangle. Try that right now. All right, so the area of the sector is going to be 80 over 360 times pi times the radius squared, so 7 squared, minus 1 half the base times the height. So pull this triangle out, which looks like this. So this is 80 degrees, so we're going to split it and get a 40. We need the height. Okay, let me switch over to black. This one is an isosceles triangle because this is a radius, so they're both 7. Take out this little triangle, and we're going to do trig on it. So put 40 degrees right here, all right, and then put uh, H, and then put a 7. So if you're standing here, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's going to be the cosine. So your height, 1 half the base times height, so it's going to be the cosine of cosine of 40 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 7 times the cosine of 40 degrees is your height. And the base is from here to here. So you have to find this base. So we have to put a y here. We're going to double the y to get the base because we want the whole thing, not half. So it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be the sine of 40 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 7, 7 times the sine of 40. And you want to multiply that by 2 to get the whole base. So times 2 um, would give you 14. So put that as 2 times 7 is 14. So that's the whole formula right there. Now, if you want to work it, let's try it. 7 squared is 49 times 3.14 times 80, press equals, divided by 360, press equals. I get 34.19 minus, okay, here you're going to do half of 14 is 7. So minus 7 times the sine of 40 times 7 cosine of 40. All right, I'm going to work backwards on this, so watch. 40 cosine times 7 equals times 40 sine times 7 equals. All right, I get um, minus 24.127. And so I'm going to hit uh, this as a minus. I'm going to put a little minus on there. And then I'm going to say plus 34.19. Now, if you follow this, I get 10.1 is the area of that little slither. And that's going to be square inches because it's area. All right, see if you get the same thing. A lot of work. There it is. This one right here, if you didn't learn trig, look up. Put your dot right here. It's going to be opposite and adjacent. That would be tangent. So it's going to be the tangent of 20 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be 10 times that. So it's going to be 20 tangent times 10 press equals. I get 3.6. Okay, so I did a lot of reviewing with you there. Um, Answer conversions. All right, let's take a look at some of these answers here. Some of you are looking at your answers back here, and you don't know how to convert. So let's try one right here. Watch this. Clear your calculator. Press pi, so 3.14 times 120. Press equals. So there you're going to get 
37 or 376.8. So 376.8 plus whatever this is. So clear your calculator. Plus press 3 shift square root times 36 press equals and then plus 376.8. And when you do, you converted it to 439. So this one should be 439.2. Okay, so make sure you know how to convert. And then we're going to work these problems again. And the numbers should be different. Okay, if they're not different, just rework it anyway. Remember for the bicycle problem, you slide it down like this, parallel, and then you have a rectangle here. The question wants to know from A to D. So put a little X right here. They tell you AB is 9 and DC is 8. I think this is the same exact problem. So this is 26. So you're going to put the 26 here, and you're going to subtract 9 minus 8 and get 1. And then you're going to do Pythagorean's theorem. So you're going to do 1 squared plus 26 squared equals X squared. All right, so go ahead and work on this worksheet. If you get stuck, ask. Have a good day. Let me slide this up a little bit so you can see it. So we did a lot of reviewing here. All right, tomorrow you'll get your practice test for Chapter 10.